welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica and I created Dolled Up by Jay. So in today's video, I wanted to do some sort of an educational journey, if you will, and talk about five common fashion mistakes and how to fix them. A lot of these things are common sense, but also things that I've been guilty of in the past. And I just thought I would share a little bit of insight on common fashion mistakes and how you can fix them very easily. So if you're here for it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing because I post new fashion content every single week. Okay, let's get to the video. So first on the agenda is ill-fitting clothing. Oh my goodness. It doesn't matter how much you spend on an outfit, whether it is all from Zara, Sheen, whatever, or the high-end designers. If your clothes do not fit properly on your body, it is just going to completely take away from any sort of effort you put in, any sort of coordination, no matter how good your hair looks, your makeup looks. If your clothes don't look like they fit properly, it's just going to ruin the whole outfit. So examples of this are going to be, say you're wearing a jacket, you know, is it really pulling across the chest? Is it too tight? Are you wearing like a tailored blazer and you've reached your arms out, you know, are the sleeves coming up way too short, too long on you and it hasn't been tailored clearly? Blouses, sometimes I struggle with this, uh, you know, pulling at the chest here and having kind of like a gap. If you have a blouse, it's not necessarily like the correct size for you. I definitely had that happen with different brands and such. And then also, you know, pants, have they not been hemmed for your body type? Are they too long, dragging on the floor? I've seen this way too many times, it's not good. Also skirts and dresses that are just way too short. I mean, I definitely love a short skirt moment, don't get me wrong, but I think there's a time and a place. There's definitely something to say about having a skirt or a dress that is the appropriate length for your body. Especially this is difficult with online shopping because Everything looks amazing on the models. You know, we have these stick thin, beautiful models that can pull off any sort of shape of whatever. And it's not necessarily flattering when it arrives on you. And I've had it happen too with online shopping where I receive things and they're just way too short. And I'm like, okay, now I have to deal with like sending it back or just trying to sell the item. It's really frustrating. Also, like, I hope I don't offend anyone by saying this, but like skirts that are too short are just they're not elegant in my opinion i'm sorry like i'm not judging anybody but i just think if you're walking around with a skirt that's like barely covering your butt and your front it's just not the most elegant look and i think that it just says a lot to have like a very elegantly dressed woman in like nicely fitted clothing but it doesn't have to be super super revealing i mean i don't know if you guys have seen my hot girl dresses video like i bought three dresses off of this brand called uh, Baby Boo Fashion. They were way too revealing, they were way too short, and I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna look classy going out wearing these dresses, because on my body, they were just way, way, way too short, way too tight, it was too much going on. So, okay, now that we've talked about it, how can we fix this? How can we fix ill-fitting clothing mistakes? Basically, for items that are too short on your body, I would recommend trying them on in person. I know it's really tempting sometimes with sales and you know online promo codes and discounts and e-commerce brands and fast fashion that's being bombarded down our throat with social media targeted marketing all the time. But I think that if you spend money on items that are then kind of a bit unwearable because you're not comfortable in them, then what's the point of spending that money, right? So I would recommend trying the items on in store, also opting for maybe fabrics that aren't so skin tight. You can still wear a shorter skirt, but have it be more of like a tailored fabric, not skin tight, not necessarily like total, you know, spandex moment. It doesn't need to be spandex. It doesn't need to be latex. Uh, those are fun moments, but at the appropriate length, just in my opinion, but if you can pull it off, pull it off. I'm not here to judge anyone, just offering some tips. Now for pants that don't fit properly, you know, you definitely wanna make sure you just spend like the $6 and get your pants hemmed if they aren't the appropriate length. Also jeans, shop the style that's best on your body type. Like don't just focus on what's trendy right now. I just find that on my body, this like low rise, mid rise trend is not flattering. Like I'm a size four and if I eat even just like one grape or a meal of any sort, like it's fat on my stomach, is just like wants to come over the mid rise, like where it cuts me. It's just not flattering. It's not crop top friendly. It is just not it for me. And so I don't necessarily care that those are the in style things. It's just not working on my body. Therefore, I'm not gonna wear it. Same thing with jackets. I mean, if you have a jacket and it's way too tight across your chest, pulling a ton, it's just gonna look uncomfortable to other people as well. It's not gonna look well fitted. 
blazers definitely just spend the money it's like maybe 50 to like 70 100 bucks to get a blazer tailored if you're spending the money on something like that then you have to also consider the cost of getting it fitted properly to you because if you're wearing jacket that's like gathering under your chest because it's just like not fitted it's kind of like loose at the sides the sleeves aren't quite right it's just not going to be good even if you are on a budget and you're shopping and getting like a zara blazer and it just looks a little bit off you thinking it's going to look off in the fitting room is going to look probably five times worse to other people that are just seeing it on you so i would just recommend getting things tailored moving on okay number two wrinkles so i used to be guilty of this all the time in my early 20s i used to leave the house all the time with wrinkled clothing thinking nobody would notice of course everyone notices it looks sloppy it looks like you lack attention to detail and you are lazy i still have moments where yes you're sitting in a car in a material that is not really wrinkle friendly and you're going to dinner or wherever and you get up and the back of your dress or the back of your pants are wrinkled it's super super frustrating and i hate when this happens you can definitely mitigate this by buying fabrics that are a little bit more wrinkle friendly especially with what you're going to be sitting in i find with tops it's a lot more forgiving like you can wear a linen shirt you can wear a silk shirt those are very wrinkle prone materials i would definitely recommend especially for bottoms opting for kind of like wrinkle friendly fabrics a little bit more kind of like thicker materials materials with stretch even like wool blends for like skirts and things like that definitely just be mindful of when you are shopping like if there's a material you're you've come across before and you own and you know it's going to wrinkle horribly don't buy it like i'm sorry but all the zara blouses basically i've ever owned in my life wrinkle horribly it's just like not a fun time i find the sandro silk blouses for some reason just like barely ever wrinkle it's like a really thick silk they're really really nice obviously they are more of an investment so yeah how to mitigate this you know obviously you can leave the house steaming your clothes and be mindful of the materials you are choosing okay number three not looking after your shoes not looking after your shoes so wearing damaged or dirty shoes this is a dead giveaway of also lack of attention to detail unfortunately i understand sometimes like yes it's not in the budget to buy a brand new pair of shoes because there's like a little bit of a scuff on one of the back of them but we can do things that mitigate having damaged and dirty shoes so that you don't need to be replacing them so often or being self-conscious when you are out this one example it's like nails on a chalkboard is like a lot of fast fashion brands of shoes especially the bottom of the heels like the, the uh, plastic or rubber stoppers often don't last very long and i mean everyone knows the sound of a girl walking by in like a restaurant or a bar and those stoppers have completely worn down to the point where it's just like a metal tack sticking out and like pounding on the floor it's really distracting to people and it just shows that like you literally could not care less to get your shoes fixed you can take your shoes to a cobbler for about 10 to 15 dollars and have them hammer in new stoppers in like under two minutes I used to have issues with Steve Madden shoes, stoppers on one of the heels I owned literally would come apart. After three uses, I had to return them twice. They fixed them for free, but I was like, I don't have time for this. So I stopped buying their shoes. Also scuff shoes, dirty shoes, damaged shoes. You know, if you have scuffs on sneakers and stuff like that on the rubber side, you can easily remove that with the Mr. Clean magic erasers or any sort of like magic eraser. Honestly, it works like a charm. Apparently you can also use rubber erasers because it's like rubber on rubber. I haven't tried that myself, but I've heard that is a really good tip. I just find when you see someone out with like really dirty sneakers, it just like, it's just really shows lack of attention to detail. Like you couldn't bother just to clean off your shoes before you went out. You know what I mean? You can definitely just help take care and prolong the life of your shoes by buying like a $10 leather cleaner conditioner. Just polish your shoes. I used to do it a lot, like especially in Canada because the weather was just like not as good. The shoes would get dirty way faster. Every couple of months just refresh my shoes. It made such a difference in the appearance. Like I can't tell you. And also when you use like a leather cleaner conditioner, on your shoes it's going to really help to like extend the life of the shoes and make them way nicer another way you can mitigate your shoes looking like trash is storing them properly like it takes literally one extra second of your time to not throw your shoes in a pile by the door or in your shoe closet you can order shoe racks online from so many different retailers and just like neatly place your shoes it will save your shoes from so much damage and especially if you go outside and the weather's not great you've got dirt on them mud on them you're not getting that on all your other shoes and then dirtying up all your shoes i think these little steps can just really elevate your look 
Um, another tip with shoe wear is putting your shoes in a dust bag or even just like a cloth bag when you travel because this will prevent a lot of damage in your suitcase. Don't just shove them in your suitcase. They could get scuffed, you know, depending how you've packed them. And, you know, if anything spills, you, don't, you just don't want to have that issue. Some brands don't offer dust bags, of course. It's a lot more of like the higher end brands, but you can use any sort of like, you know, fabric bag, a shopping tote, even like a plastic bag. Like anything is better than just packing shoes without any sort of protection. And then also like if you haven't cleaned the bottom of your soles and you throw them in your suitcase, that's just getting on your clothes. Like it's kind of gross, right? So yeah, just little basic steps to take care of your shoes and have them looking in good condition. Like that's what I like to do. Okay, number four, leaving the tags stitched on clothing. So there are certain tags with certain manufacturers will stitch it on the outside of the clothing and it is not meant to be left on. My biggest pet peeve was in Vancouver. I don't know why so many people still do this. Aritzia sells these coats that have like a cashmere blend and wool and they put on the outside cuff, put that it's like one cashmere blend coat. And for some reason, I remember seeing so many people walking around with these newly bought jackets and they would go all season. It'd be people I worked with, with this patch on. That is a manufacturer patch. It's meant to advertise the materials of the coat. So you're more likely to buy it because a lot of people don't check like the tags on the inside because people obviously are inherently lazy. Like you really have to like look and like go through the tag and like figure out what the thing is made of before you buy it a lot of the time, you know, see if you're getting your money's worth of that item. So a lot of manufacturers, especially in like the mid-level range, like some of them will put it a stitch on the outside of the clothing that is not meant to be kept on at all. This also goes with like the little stitches that are on the flaps of like a blazer or a jacket. Those are meant to hold the flaps together while it is being brought into the store, while it is being shipped so it hangs in nicely, it doesn't get caught and wrinkled. And those are meant to be cut when you bring the item home. They're not meant to be left on the jacket to hold it together. They're two flimsy little stitches. Like, do you think if they sewed that whole jacket together, they're gonna put two flimsy little stitches on flaps? No. And the worst thing is when you see people walking and like one of the stitches has come undone and it's like dangling behind them. And I just wanna be like, you're meant to cut that. So how can you mitigate this? Remove the tags and cut the stitches, okay? It's amazing to me how many people still do this. And I think that a lot of people watching this channel and are interested in like fashion and all of that know better, but you never know. I mean, maybe we can all laugh about it. You know, this is a common mistake. Maybe some of us used to do it. Okay, and the last item, number five, is wearing banged up bags. So not a good look. So my first like luxury purse was a Tory Burch bag. I forget the name. Honestly, I was so sorely disappointed in the quality to me at the time that was like a big splurge was that bag and within literally six months There were so many signs of wear like the corners and edges were showing so much signs of wear The leather where it would hit my hip when I would walk with it on the inside of the bag was completely like rubbing off in patches and looking gray and one of my friends even said like oh, is that bag like vintage or did you get it like secondhand? And I was like, no, I bought this less than a year ago. She literally thought it was vintage. Like I had to stop wearing the bag. It was so disheartening because at the time I couldn't just go out and like buy a new one. You know what I mean? And I think that like if you're wearing a purse that's like, you know, it's got threads hanging out. The hardware is super banged up. There's like scratches all over it. It just takes away from the outfit. And I understand it's not sustainable for every single person every time their bag has signs of wear to go out and buy a new one. Absolutely not. But there's things we can do to mitigate this. For example, if you're buying $50 purses from Topshop, I've done it before in my entire teenage life, Topshop and all those purses, they last literally like four to six months maximum before they start looking like absolute crap. It's just not worth it. I would rather now like invest in a bag and have it last for years and be more timeless and classic than buy a bunch of like fast fashion crap. Also those fake leather purses, they are made with a lot of chemicals that actually do release chemicals into your house. Like throughout the lifetime of the bag. And that's why they smell so strong because they have so many chemicals in them. So I know clothes, that's a whole other topic as well. But that's one thing with fast fashion bags. Like they're actually not the best for your health either, but it's like a whole other topic. So you can mitigate this by just not buying a new fast fashion bag every four to six months. And instead use the money to buy a bag from a reputable brand. It doesn't need to be Chanel. It doesn't need to be Hermes, but you can get nice quality, beautiful bags from brands like Marc Jacobs. You can get a bag from Rebecca Minkoff. You can also get obviously really nice 
like more timeless bags from coach they do have some cute ones lately as well it doesn't need to have like the monogram and all that it can be a little bit more understated i would definitely just recommend that way more or also you can find sometimes some nice leather bags even in like secondhand stores you can shop the pre-loved market if you are still bougie on a budget you can look for sales in brands like Marc Jacobs with department stores. They're always doing 40% off, 50% off sales. If you have a loyalty card or a membership card to any of these stores, they usually offer additional discounts as well. So there are ways about it if you're on a budget as well to have a nice bag that's not super, super banged up from a high quality, reputable brand. If you do have worn designer bags, there are a lot of handbag restoration services. I didn't really realize this was such a thing. It's within a certain time frame. You can take a lot of your designer bags, if you own designer bags, back to the boutique and they will send it away for you to be repaired free of charge. Now, if it's past a certain period and depending on the brand, you might need to find your own handbag restoration company that will do it for you. And they will like repaint that bag. They will fix stitching. I think they even fix like certain hardware issues, which is really awesome. So just because a bag is super worn looking, but you paid a lot of money for it, doesn't mean you can't wear it again, but you can take measures to fix it that maybe like some people just might not be aware of. And then finally, another way to mitigate wearing, you know, bags that look like they've been through it and they're not doing anything positive for your outfit. I want to do a separate video on this, it's a huge topic, but counterfeit bags, honestly, avoid. Your fake Chanel boy bag or whatever fake bag you buy might look good for the first like three to six months. After that, it's going to be showing atypical signs of wear. You know, the hardware is going to have an unusual amount of wear. The stitching might be coming loose or even look uneven to begin with. The leather is going to be showing a lot of signs of wear as well. I mean, I know that fakes are getting really, really good now, but when you spot someone with a designer bag where like the threads are literally like coming off, the straps are like super, super cracked and just not looking good. You know, did you really spend that much on this bag and you've only been wearing it for like a year or so, like just under a year, that doesn't make any sense. Like why haven't you taken it back to the boutique? It's a dead giveaway that it's a fake and it's not doing anything to elevate your outfit. I know a lot of people out there are really pushing like DH gate dupes on TikTok, but I would just 100% steer clear of that because those bags might look great at first, not gonna wear well because they're just not made the same as if you were to buy it from, from the brand itself because the standard of manufacturing and labor and all of that, it's made with speed, it's made with efficiency, it's not made for craftsmanship, it's made for quick sales. These bags are like a couple hundred bucks, I believe and you get what you pay for. Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed these five fashion mistakes and how to fix them. I hope you didn't find it like too preachy. I wanted it to be helpful, but also relatable because I've definitely been guilty of like almost all of these things in my lifetime for sure. And I'm sure many of us have. And I think that it would be a good discussion for all the fashion enthusiasts on this channel. If you have any other ones or any input, definitely leave a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, definitely give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye guys.